I don't see us. Let me begin. Now, Brian, it is important for you ah. to stay relaxed. Was it really necessary to tie me to the chair? See, believe me, it was for your own safety, I assure you. Now, stare into my eyes, por favor. All the tension is flowing out of your body. You are relaxed, more and more relaxed. Oh, you you feel kiss. good, muy bien. I am going to count to three, and when I finish, you will fall into a deep slumber. One, two, three. We are here to contact the being from the other side. We have the will and the medium. We have the will and the medium. The medium awaits in the center of the pentagram. Someone from this plane wishes to speak with that being. We invoke that being with all due respect. We have the will and the medium. Gina, it's your turn. Speak with that spirit. Tell him you want to talk with him. Johnny? Johnny the Indian? It's me, Gina. I need to talk with you. You were about to tell me something and we were interrupted. Now we have a chance to finish our conversation. Johnny, it's me, Gina. Please talk to me. You. Yes, I remember. We were talking at the pink iguana when those thugs showed up, but I don't remember anything more. Where have I been? It's dark here, and I'm freezing. Johnny, look, you're... you're... locked up. The Sandretti's locked you into the basement, under the storeroom, in the pink iguana. Damn them. Gina, you've got to help me. Get me out of here, and I'll take you with me. We'll be rich, kiddo, and we'll live like kings. So, it's true? You kept the money from the truck heist? Of course I did. I pulled one over on those bastards. I'll share the cash with you, baby. Just get me out of here fast. Now's not a good time. There's guards all over the place. I'll come get you out later. But tell me, where did you hide the money? The Sandrettis haven't been able to find a clue. <laughs> of course they haven't found it. Do you think I'm an idiot? Those evil doers would never find the money. <laughs> you are so sly, Johnny. Where is it hidden? Yeah, kiddo. Too smart to trust you, too. I'm not telling you one more word. Get me out of here, and I'll give you your piece of the pie. Mm hmm. Okay. All right. I'll come back in a while and help you escape. I'll be waiting. Make it quick. Johnny? Johnny? He has departed. And I must say I don't like what I saw one bit. Gina, you have toyed with a spirit, and that can be very dangerous. Hope you don't regret it later on. But let us set that topic aside. Ryan is exhausted and needs to rest. Ask her, untie Brian and take him to my room. Lay him on the bed and let him sleep as long as he needs. All right, so the plot thickens and sickens and squickens and flickens, pickens and... I need to stop this now, it's stupid. Ow! Gina! Oscar put you in bed. You've been asleep for nearly 24 hours. The effort of being a medium left you exhausted. Do you remember anything that happened in the Well of Souls? Enough! Everything seemed like a dream. It was like I was floating above your heads. But I perfectly remember that you didn't invoke your father. No, it was Johnny. Johnny the Indian. That's it. Well, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Yes, I guess so. Yes. Well, here goes. Remember everything I told you about my father's death in the hospital? Yeah, of course I remember. Well, it wasn't exactly true. You mean, your father didn't? No, he's perfectly fine. And he doesn't work for the government, like I said. He breeds sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. So, you invented all of that? Not exactly. Let me explain. I really did work at the Pink Iguana, but I wasn't really a singer. I performed in another type of show. That night, when my act was over, I talked to Johnny the Indian, a pretty shady fellow who had just gotten out on parole. Johnny had had a few too many. He told me he was going to start a new life and that I should go with him. 
He showed me the crucifix he wore around his neck the whole four years he spent in prison and said it was the key that would open the door to that new life. He was drunk and I didn't take him very seriously. I thought the guy was embracing Christianity or something like that. And then the Sandretti brothers showed up. Johnny asked me to keep the crucifix for him and to disappear before they saw me. Everything I told you about my father's death in the storeroom of the pink iguana was true, but it wasn't my father they killed. It was Johnny. They interrogated him and beat him to a pulp. I'd heard of the Sandretti brothers and how dangerous they are, but that night, I saw it with my own eyes. When I saw them kill Johnny, I couldn't help but scream, so they found me out and I ran as fast as I could down the alley. Stuff starting to make a little more sense now. But why were they interrogating him? What did he do? Well, Johnny had just spent four years in the slammer for holding up a truck. The whole heist was set up by the Sandrettis. Johnny was part of the group that did the job. In the beginning, the theft was a success. A fast robbery with no deaths or injuries. The money was supposed to be handed over to the Sandrettis in a garage a few hours later. But someone set a trap. The garage was full of cops and the thieves were arrested. Luckily for them, the Sandrettis didn't show up personally, so no one could prove they were involved. However, they didn't catch all the thieves. For some reason, Johnny managed to get away, and they didn't find him till two days later near the Mexican border. More importantly, the money from the robbery never appeared. What do you mean? It wasn't in the garage, so and Johnny didn't have it when they arrested him. He swore he escaped from the garage without taking a cent. Despite all their investigations, the police never found the cash. From what I heard the night they killed Johnny, the Sandretti suspected he'd kept the money and that he was the one who informed the cops and set up the raid on the garage. They thought he'd hidden the dough somewhere during the two days he was hiding out and that he had let himself get caught so the Sandrettis wouldn't suspect anything. You think someone with that much money would allow himself to be caught knowing he'd be put away for years? Yeah, if he didn't have any other choice. He knew that if he ran off with the money, the Sandrettis would find out and hunt him down long before the police did. He must have thought 20 million bucks were well worth four years in prison. 20 million? 20 million! No doubt Johnny thought that by the time he was released, the Sandrettis would have forgotten the whole story and that he could enjoy a great retirement. But things didn't work out that way. The Sandrettis don't forget 20 million bucks just because, and they were looking for him the day he got out of jail. So, when the Sandrettis interrogated him, did they get the truth out of him? No, that animal Gustav killed him too fast, and Johnny never acknowledged having kept the money. So we don't know if Johnny really even had it. Oh, yes we do. He told me so through your mouth during the seance. The bad thing is, I couldn't get him to tell me where he hid the money. So, all you were really interested in the whole time was getting that money, huh? No, well, at least not at first. I was just trying to save my life. I had been an eyewitness to a murder and knew that they would snuff me out to keep me from talking. After that, I admit I thought if we found the money, I could start a new life far from the Sandrettis. <laughs> is that so terrible? Depends on how you look at it. What I don't understand is why they didn't knock us off in Chicago when they had us trapped in the museum. Someone at the Pink Iguana probably told them Johnny had talked to me before they killed him. They must have thought I knew something about the money, and they wanted to get it out of me. Lucky you were so great and got us out of that awful cabin. Oh, don't suck up to me now. You've been fooling me all this time. I'm such an idiot. I walked right into your trap. Please, Brian, you've got to forgive me. I swear I never wanted to lie to you, but I was scared to death. And I was afraid you wouldn't help me if I told you the truth. Well, you're wrong there. I'm so stupid I'd have helped you anyway. But this is the end of it. Oh. I'm leaving straight for California, and you? No, please. You know they'll kill me. Sooner or later they'll find me and do me in. My only chance is to find the money and use it to start a new life. You know that. Please don't leave me alone now. Help me. Okay. I'll help you find that cursed money. And then, I never want to see you again as long as I live. Don't say that. I really care about you. Oh, please. Don't play me for a sucker again. I already said I'd help you. Save the sorry act for the theater. Don't believe me if you don't want to. But I'm being sincere. Besides, if we find the money, half will be yours. I don't want a dime of that money. Do whatever you want. Well... We know Johnny safeguarded the money somewhere nearby. And no matter how strange it seems, the 
finger in the bottle must have something to do with it. Yes. But where should we start to look? Look, I don't know. you were asleep. I remembered something Johnny told me years ago, before the robbery. What? He said that he used to take time off between jobs to spend a few days in his homeland in Arizona, in an old trailer where he used to live before going to New York. That trailer can't be very far from here. And if we find it, maybe there'll be some clues about the money inside. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Well, I'll start with that and try to find that trailer. I'm going with you. My leg is much better. No way. You haven't recovered yet, and I don't want to have to carry you. Are you going to be mad at me for the rest of your life? No, because I plan on removing you from it soon. Fine, just go alone if my company annoys you. I'm leaving, but don't worry. I'll be back. Goodbye. First thing I'll do is go see Sushi. Okay. I've got to speak with someone I can trust about all of this. Sushi! And I'll trust the internet nerd who I've only known for a day. Well, better trust it, Gina. Hi, She's Sushi. Untrustworthy at the moment. Is she making a robot? Hi, Brian. How's it going? Did you find anything out? Actually, I did, but I'm not sure whether I'm too happy about it. Why's that? What happened? Everything Gina told me to wrap me up in this mess has turned out to be a pack of lies. Seriously? Tell all. Look, you remember about Gina's father? Yeah, the poor girl saw them murder him in cold blood right before her very eyes. Well, forget about the murder. The old guy is living peacefully, breeding sheep in Marion Bridge, Utah. What? And that's when Gina told me the truth. She can't return to New York because she wouldn't last two days. She plans to have me help her find the money that Johnny stole so she can start a new life. I don't know what to do. I'm not interested in the money. But I don't want to leave Gina high and dry either. Besides, my life isn't worth much more than Gina's at this point. Well, the way I look at it, that money has no owner at this point. It'd be better for Gina to keep it and start that new life than to have it end up in the hands of those awful Sandretti mob guys. As for the bank the money was stolen from, I'm sure it got an insurance payoff years ago. So nobody will lose out. I don't know. Ever since I left New York, I feel like I've lost control of my life. I'm like a puppet with someone else pulling my strings. They decide what I can and can't do. Sort of like in those computer games. You know what I mean? Computer oh, games? Really? Yeah, I love them. Cheer up, Brian. You know you can count on me for help. Thanks, Sushi. You're wonderful. Anyway, I gotta try and find Johnny's old trailer. We know it's around here somewhere. Yes. And I'm sure I'll find clues in it leading me to the money. An old trailer? I don't remember seeing one, but the truth is that I don't leave Douglasville except to go into the city for provisions. Maybe Rutger or Saturn know something. Yeah, I'll go talk to them. See you around, Sushi. Okay, see you soon. That's actually a pretty sweet setup. They actually have to leave town to go to a real city to get provisions, but effectively their their house is like a humongous, you know, roommate situation. It's just several buildings instead of one building. Let's see if Rutgers seen a trailer. Hey, Rutger. Hey, how was that yummy cocktail I made for you? Great, it worked fine. But I assure you, I don't plan on trying it again. Well, whatever. Hey, do you remember seeing a trailer around somewhere during your plant gathering expeditions? A trailer? No, I don't remember seeing any trailer, man. Okay. I'll just go on my way, Wrecker. See ya. See ya. <laughs> Can you tell me about the Rastafari beliefs question? It's back. That that was fun. Whoa. Hello, alien. Hello, Saturn. How's it going with the idea blasting helmet? Hello, BB. The helmet is excellent. Amazing. The only problem is the great Desequa 
The what? The statue I had hanging on the crane. It's disappeared. You wouldn't happen to know anything about that, would you? Me? No, not a clue. So odd, don't you think? Yeah. Well, I hope it's just one of Rutger's little practical jokes. Though he assured me he knows nothing. Don't worry. I'm sure it'll turn up. I hope so. Hey, when you've gone out looking for raw materials, did you happen to see a trailer? <laughs> I think I recall seeing an old trailer one time. Yay! Yes. But it didn't seem like anyone lived in it. It looked abandoned. And where was that, Saturn? Don't you remember? It's really important. Well, let me think. That must have been seven or eight months ago. And at that time, I was involved in a project for which I needed a large quantity of clay. So I was in search of argillaceous zones. By the way, have I mentioned a simply amazing work? The construction of an exact replica of the city of Florence in the second half of the 14th century. Splendor of Florence. It's one of my greatest works. You see, I was trying to capture the spirit that... Listen, Saturn. That's interesting and all, but I'm in kind of a hurry. I'll drop by later so you can fill me in on your great work, but please just tell me where you saw that trailer for now. All right, I shall. It was on the other side of Painted Canyon Gulch, to the south of Douglasville, about one hour away from here. Okay, I hope I can find it. You should really reflect on your life, BB. You always seem to be searching for something you don't have. Yes, I do. I see you're working on a stone sculpture right now. Yes, I can't tell you exactly what it is that I'm sculpting, but I've been struck with great inspiration. Now that you've got your inspiration back, could you return the helmet to me? Return the idea-forming helmet? Not a chance. A deal is a deal. We'll discuss that later, Saturn. See you soon. Ciao. Trailer to look for. Yo ho, trailer! Oh. Broken bicycle and stuff. What is that? The heck is that thing? Ha! Huh. There's the trailer. No doubt about it. That's gotta be the one. Okay, let's see what I find difference. around here. Oh, dang, flannel rabbit! I'm always forgetting things. The fireplace poker. Yeah, I may use it. It's been covered with ash and soot by the fire, but it's not in bad shape. Right, right, it's a fireplace poker, man. Get on with it! To the trailer. Okay, keep going. He walks so slow. Why must he walk so slow? I prefer when I can just double click and make him teleport. Man, that place is messed up. Impossible. It's locked up tight. Okay, now we're going to have to go find Indian Johnny's key and you know what? Screw that. Poker. Sure. By using it as a lever, I might get that door open. Heck yeah. It worked. I'm in. I am awesome. what I find inside. Ugh, what a stench. Place is a mess. I'd better move fast and get out of here as soon as possible. Ugh. It's just filled with old clothes. Yeah, but some of them might be needed. I won't find any clues in there. Just old clothes and some blankets. Alright. How weird. This looks like a nun's habit. A nun's habit? Fascinating. Don't see anything tasty. Just some leftovers and a couple of empty bottles. No, that's okay. What for? The piece of cheese on the third shelf? I think it's already too late to save it. Hmm. 
don't see any. Okay, I'll just rummage through these papers. This looks interesting. It's an advertisement for a bank. That may be where the money is. Really? I bet Johnny put the money in that bank. I have to find out if he really did. Okay, so how do we find that out? If only I had somebody good at tracking bank information. Okay, yeah, we're going to go see sushi. And we're going to have to wait for him to walk. Walk, 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 walk. Until at least till I, till I get to there. Yay! Sushi! Hey, Brian. Anything newsy? I found Johnny's trailer. Yay. How cool. And did you find any clues leading to the money? Yeah, I found a brochure for a maximum security bank in the trailer. I'd appreciate it a lot if you could investigate it on the internet and find out about the bank. Sure, that's a cinch. I'm going to finish a little job I'm wrapped up in, and then I'll get right to it. Leave the brochure on the desk, please. Okay. Thanks, Sushi. No problem. I'll report back later. Alright. She's gonna go do that so I can just leave, I guess. Do 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 leave in town. Do 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 okay, that's long enough. Brian! Come on up, fast! Okay. I've got some really juicy news. I'm coming. I can come faster if you just let me double click and then interrupt me and make me do a cutscene where I walk up the stairs. Walk, 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 walk. So, what did you find out? First of all, I investigated what type of bank the brochure you found is for. It's not any conventional bank. The customers rent safety deposit boxes to keep their stuff in. Money, jewelry, antiques, whatever. They don't have to give any explanation at all of what's deposited inside. And I assure you, the place is a veritable fortress. I need not say that there has never been a robbery or even an attempted robbery. Then, do you think Johnny put the money there? Well, it's a possibility. This type of bank charges its customers a fortune, and in turn, they pay astronomical taxes to the government in exchange for certain immunity. I mean, the police have no access to listed customers or the items on deposit. That undoubtedly makes it a pretty safe place to stash money. Using my amazing skills, I broke into the bank's database, but I didn't see the name Johnny anywhere on the list of customers. That doesn't surprise me. If Johnny wanted to hide the money there, I'm sure he was more concerned about throwing the Sandrettis off than the police. But what really gave me a big clue was the security system used at the Mojave Bank. When customers rent a safety deposit box, they receive no key or magnetic card whatsoever. Nothing. What they do is perform a fingerprint analysis. And when customers want to access the box, they just place their index finger on a scanner for the computer to identify their fingerprint. And then the fill it in. The you catch my drift? Yeah, you're thinking of the bottle of formaldehyde I found in the sacred crypt. There you go. Then I researched the police databases, and I entered Johnny's full name, John Tawangyama. I verified that he showed up dead in a New York alley two days ago. I kept following the lead of his last name, which obviously isn't very common, and I found an interesting bit of info. Four years back, a woman's corpse floated up in the Green Gila River. When they checked her identity, she turned out to be Sister Juana Buenadicha of the Santa Clara Mission in California. She'd been strangled and thrown into the river. A nun? No way! Nun How was she horrible. connected to all this? Juana Buenadicha is the name she took when she entered the order. That woman was an Indian, though, and her real name was Mary Tawangyama. Was she related to Johnny? It was his twin sister. Guess what was missing from the body when they found it? I bet it was... Her right index finger. Bingo! 
And whose name do you think the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank was rented to for 10 years? Sister Juana Benedicha? Exactly. It all fits together now. Johnny made his sister rent the safety deposit box at the Mojave Bank and put all the money there. I don't think he planned on killing her in the beginning, but by the end, he was afraid she would betray him while he was in prison. That scoundrel preferred not to risk it, so he strangled his own sister, cut her finger off, and tossed the body into the river. Psycho. I guess he thought it wouldn't be hard to disguise himself as a nun and use his sister's finger to take out the money when the time came. Hiding the finger in the sacred Hopi crypt seems a bit unlikely, but I think he was running out of time by then, and he needed a safe place to keep the finger for all of the years he was going to be locked up in jail. He knew about the crypt, and it seemed like a good solution. I suppose that what he never counted on was that the Sandrettis would get suspicious and go after him the minute he was released from prison. You good work, Sushi. I'm amazed. Thanks. Well, I don't think there's anything to stop you from taking the money using the plan Johnny already cooked up. Just to be on the safe side, it would be better for Gina to dress up as Juana Buenadicha. She can put on a nun outfit and use the finger. I don't think she'll have any trouble taking out the cash. These banks are famous for not asking lots of questions. Sushi, it's only fair for you to get some of the money. You've definitely earned your share. I don't really need it. No, Brian. You know, I don't like to talk about this, but I've actually got a lot of my own money already. I inherited a truckload and won't be able to spend it all if I live a thousand years. So I'm not nice, interested in money, people. probably because I've me. never needed it. That's just me. Don't think twice, Brian. Have Gina get the money and start a new life. You just have to get a nun costume, and that shouldn't be a pro- Wait, now I remember. When I was in Johnny's trailer, I saw a nun's habit on a hanger. How evil. I'm sure it was his sister's habit. Well, all the better. Go get that habit and you're ready. But don't leave without saying goodbye. Of course not, Sushi. Before picking up Gina to leave, I'll come by and say farewell. See ya. See ya, Brian. All right. I think I saw it in a science fiction movie. Some classic in black and white. No, it's not a she's not building a robot. It's a... Uh, what would I gain by moving it around? It's a uh, prop. Sci-fi. Awesome. What would I want a prop from? Mars Attacks. Alright, if I were going to pick a sci-fi prop, I would probably want to... I think I, I think I remember hearing several years ago, years and years ago, that they auctioned off some of the killer clowns from outer space models, and they got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars just for like three of them. Alright.